Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video about the journaling exercise that helped me overcome the fear that I had around quitting my full-time job to pursue blogging. This is an exercise that can be done for any kind of big decision or even a small decision that you've been making but you've got a bit of fear around. So I just thought it'd be helpful to share it. It's not my exercise. It's from the book Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. I've already spoken about this book quite a lot. As you can see, I have tabbed the shit out of this book and I did a whole video on the system that I use for tabbing. So I'm not going to go into that, but that's just what I personally do to make sure that I am getting the most out of every personal development and business book that I read. I found out about this book through Tim Ferriss's podcast. I'll link everything I chat about in this video in the description box, but I've been following his podcast for years. And when he mentioned that he was creating a book about the things that he's learned from all the interviewees on his podcast. I had to get my hands on it and there are so many incredible exercises in it like the one that I'm going to walk you through today. So I definitely recommend picking up this book if you're really interested in personal development or business or health as well. And the book isn't actually like it looks huge and I know that that might look like a lot to read but it's the kind of book where you jump around and choose what you wanna read. It's one of those like pick your own adventure almost sort of books, but in a self-help book. I haven't read a lot of this book. I've probably only read about two thirds, but I got so much from it. So I use the exercise I'm going to talk about to help me make the decision around quitting my full-time job for blogging. And at the time I actually like wasn't consciously making that decision. I was just reading the book and he recommended this exercise and I've heard him talk about it quite a bit. So I was like, I really want to try it. And then it just said to do it around something you have a lot of fear around that you've been thinking of doing but haven't done. And I was like, well, quitting my job. Then once I did this exercise, I really got so clear on the fear that I had. I thought I knew exactly what I was scared of, but I didn't until I did this exercise. Once I did this, that really put everything else into motion. I started looking for jobs. I got a job very quickly, like a part-time job so that I could support myself while I was growing my blog. So this exercise, like I'm so passionate about it because it really changed my life. I hope it'll have as big an impact on your life as well or even just help you with a tricky decision that you've been trying to make. So this exercise is based on the premise that you can only really conquer your fear once you have defined it. It's really just a journaling exercise to help you really nut out exactly what you're scared of. If you're anything like me, the result will be very different to what you thought it would be. Even though I'd spent so much time feeling fear around that decision and thought I knew exactly what I was scared of, it was actually completely different. So when I did this exercise, I thought I was scared of what other people would think. I'm a perfectionist and have the all or nothing mindset and with that often it comes the fear of what other people will think. I know it's not logical, I know that it doesn't matter what other people think, but it's still something that drives my actions, not as much today because I have started to really not care as much about what other people think. The intellectual knowledge that I shouldn't care about what other people think isn't enough to stop that behavior that comes from it. So I thought I was scared of what other people would think and I also thought that I was scared of failing. When I did this exercise, I actually uncovered a lot, but one of the main things that really helped me was I realized that I wasn't actually that scared of what other people would think. What I was scared of was that my blog would fail, like people would get over it, no one would want to read it, and that that failure would put pressure on my relationship with Steve and somehow cause that relationship to come to an end. So once I could actually finally see that that's what I was truly scared of, it was so much easier to, to actually make the decision to quit my full-time job because once you actually know what you're scared of, you can really look at it and actually start being a lot more rational around your fear. If it's this big like fear of failure, fear of what other people will think, it's so hard to conquer that because it's so vague, you feel like you can't actually get a grip on it. This exercise will help you get a grip on exactly what your fear is and make it that much easier to overcome. So let's just get into the exercise. I'm just gonna walk you through each of the steps. It will probably take you around, I would say 15 to 30 minutes if you're gonna do the exercise properly and really 
dig into the fears and beliefs that you have around a certain decision. So that decision could be whether you want to go travel or study abroad. It could be whether you want to start a relationship or end a relationship. It could be whether you want to buy a house. It could be whether you want to get a dog or a cat. I'm a cat person. I love dogs, but I'm a cat person. It could be whether you want to go back to school to study. It could be whether you want to change careers. Like, just think of something that you've been thinking about doing but haven't done yet and you probably haven't done it because you're scared. That's the perfect thing to do this exercise about. I'm not going to read everything that is written in this particular section because I don't think it's interesting for me to just read you a book. So I do recommend actually getting this book. I'll put a link in the description box below so you can pick it up and I really hope you find it helpful. Please let me know if you do. And you can actually see here that I did this, I've written down the date that I did it on the 28th of December 2016. So I did it just before the beginning of the new year and I ended up resigning from my job in early February. So once I did this, things really got rolling. Like I'd been hoping that maybe I could quit my job one day, but once I did this, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to quit like very, very soon. And I did. So it was so good. Okay, I'm going to stop hyping this up and actually just share it with you. I'll also write out the questions in the description box because that might be easier for you to follow along after you've watched this. But get out just any journal, any pen. I highly recommend handwriting. I just find personally and so do a lot of people that if you're typing, you just don't get the same level of thinking as if you were putting pen to paper. So get out a journal and pen and then go through each of these questions. I'm just going to run through what they are and yeah. Okay. Also, I've just seen a quote that I love and I just wanted to mention it before I jump in. It is... Most people will choose unhappiness over uncertainty. Think about that for a second. Most people will choose unhappiness over uncertainty. Have you been doing that? Have you been choosing a familiar misery just because you don't know what else is out there and you're really scared of it? If that's the case, please do this exercise. Anyway, I'm going to actually do it now. No more distractions. So the first question says, define your nightmare, the absolute worst that could happen if you did what you are considering to do. What doubt, fears, and what ifs pop up as you consider the big changes you can or need to make? What would be the permanent impact, if any, on a scale of one to 10? Are these things really permanent? And how likely do you think it is that they would actually happen? So that's the first step is kind of really getting a hold of what your fears are and whether those fears are as permanent or horrible as you actually think they are. Because as I was saying, when we keep it really vague, we tend to make things worse than they actually are. So this step is really helping bring it back into perspective. Is the worst case scenario actually as bad as we think it is? How likely is it to happen and is it permanent? Often it's not permanent and it's not likely to happen and it's not even that bad. So that's the first step. Step number two, what steps could you take to repair the damage or get things back on the upswing even if temporarily? In the first step, we looked at going through what the worst case scenario is and how likely that is. This is saying if the worst case scenario actually happened, what could you do to fix it? How could you get things going again? Like even if that happened, what could you do? How could you get back to your current situation if you needed to? Step three, what are the outcomes or benefits, both temporary and permanent, of more probable scenarios? What would the impact of these more likely outcomes be on a scale of 1 to 10? How likely is it that you could produce at least one moderately good outcome and have less intelligent people done this before and pulled it off? So it's really important in this step to have a look at more probable outcomes. So we've looked at the worst case scenario. Now we're looking at all the other options and seeing if these options are more likely than the worst case scenario, which they normally are and what impact they would have, like if it's more likely that you'd have a really good outcome and that impact would completely change your life. Like that's what we're trying to figure out in this step. Step four, and there are seven steps, I forgot to mention that. If you were fired from your job today, what would you do to get things under financial control? So that's just a question to help get you problem solving if you were fired from your job today. And most people 
don't want to think about that scenario, but it could probably happen to most of us, even if you're in a permanent job in a secure industry and in a secure position and it's like the safe thing to do, you could get fired. What would you do if that happened? What resources do you have? What support network do you have? Like, what would you actually do? Step number five is what are you putting off out of fear? Usually what we fear doing is what we most need to do. That phone call, that conversation, whatever the action might be, it is fear of unknown outcomes that prevents us from doing what we need to do. Define the worst case, accept it and do it. So in some situations, there will be a difficult conversation that you will need to have in order to do the thing you want to do. So for me, that conversation was the resignation conversation that I needed to have with my boss. But for other people, that might be a conversation you need to have, like if you're ending a relationship, the conversation you need to have with your boyfriend. If you're starting, wanna start a relationship, that conversation can be challenging as well. Maybe you wanna get in touch with someone again, or maybe you're applying for a job, but you just don't wanna pick up the phone and actually speak to the person you need to speak to. This question is asking you, what are you putting off out of fear so that you can really see that you are just procrastinating out of fear. There's not some really legitimate reason for putting it off. You're actually just scared. It's completely okay, but it's really amazing to just see what are you putting off out of fear and is it really worth having that one conversation stopping you from getting what you want out of life? Like we only live once. Okay, we're getting near to the end. And as I said, this does take a bit of time. Some of them will be quicker than others, but step six is what is it costing you financially, emotionally, and physically to postpone action? If you don't pursue those things that excite you, where will you be in one year, five years, and 10 years? Inaction is the greatest risk of all. So this one is really putting into perspective the cost of inaction. So often when we are looking at fear, we really associate that fear with action and that if we do a certain thing, something's going to happen that we don't want to happen. What we often forget to think about are all of the negatives that are coming from inaction and procrastination and not doing anything. Like what are the negatives that are coming from you staying in the same position? Maybe you're in a relationship and you're not happy. The cost of not having that difficult conversation, the breakup conversation is going to be costing you. And if you're staying in the job that you hate, that's going to be costing you. And if you're missing out on travel, that's going to be costing you. And we often forget to think about the costs of inaction. So that's what this step is for. Step number six. And there's one final question, which is really quick because when I did it, I couldn't come up with an answer. <laughs> so the question is, what are you waiting for? And then it says, if you cannot answer this without resorting to the BS concept of good timing, the answer is simple. You're afraid, just like the rest of the world. Measure the cost of inaction, realize the unlikelihood and repairability of most missteps and develop the most important habit of those who excel and enjoy doing so, action. So that's the exercise. It is from Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss, one of my favorite books, the book I've probably spoken about the most this year in 2017. Highly recommend getting it, but I highly recommend doing this exercise. I'll, as I said, I'll leave the questions below so you can just get a journal and, or a scrap of paper, whatever it is, and a pen and actually write down the answers. All you need is something you've been wanting to do and have a bit of fear around to use as the center for this activity. And then you just go through and answer the questions. And as I said before, this has completely changed my life and I really hope it has the same impact on yours. If you like this video and if you're gonna do the exercise, please let me know in the comments and I'd also love to hear what you uncovered and what action you end up taking after doing this exercise. Like if you can't tell, I'm super in love with it. I will also link below um, a bit more about Tim Ferriss. He's recently done a TED talk as well. I think he's done maybe a couple, but he did one again very recently. So I'll link that below and his podcast because he's one of my favorite people to follow when it comes to personal growth and self-help. And he does a lot of other stuff too. He talks a lot about business. Um, and startups and all of that kind of thing and also a lot about exercise. I'm not really into following him for nutrition and exercise advice so I know a lot of people are. He's extremely knowledgeable but not even that. He's 
I think just a normal person that puts a lot of effort into learning new things and trying things out and then sharing it with everyone. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I share a lot of advice about how to make the most of your 20s. It's all personal growth and lifestyle advice for women and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!